is the current inflation rate something of importance? What is the inflation rate? Do we need a central bank to govern and try to manage that inflation rate? Is it important to you? Is it important to the country as a whole or to the economy as a whole? That is the nature and topic of this video. My name is Mark Biernot, and I'm a research economist. My specialty is monetary economics. Monetary economics. I do my research in price level movements. Specifically, I look at historical figures and relate them to the current times of today. For example, the Swedish economic Knuth Excel. So the basis for my judgments about is inflation important, is the current inflation rate relevant to you and to the economy as a whole, I think has some weight. Let's take a look at the arguments first for the individual and then for the economy as a whole. For the individual, there are two components which you need to know, two economic concepts which you need to understand. The first thing is the substitution effect, and the second thing is rational expectations. What does that mean? Okay, so the argument with inflation is it's essentially a flat tax for everybody. That means the prices of everything go up equally, whether you're rich or whether you're poor, correct? And it should, in theory, affect the poor more because ceteris paribus, their disposable income is less. So in critical components like food and energy, they have less money to spend and it takes a bigger bite out of their total budget. Disposable income is less for the poor or even the middle class when prices for food and energy go up, they are affected the most. Where the rich, they hold a lot of assets. A lot of their wealth is in the form of assets. So when you have asset price inflation, they have growth. So the theory is the rich get richer and the poor get poorer and the middle class kind of gets squeezed down to the lower. Ceteris paribus. But let's take a look at that. When you have ceteris paribus, it's often canceled out by rational agents operating with rational expectations and the substitution effect. The metaphor is in chess. If somebody opens with the king's pawn opening for white, black can reply and they can do some calculations and rationally expect maybe they should do the Sicilian defense. Maybe they should do the Caracon defense. But you rationally are a flexible individual. If the price of chicken goes up, maybe I should switch to beet, beef. Maybe I should be, you know, jump on the bandwagon and get into the pea protein or be on a, you know, keto something something and cut out carbs save money you know there's always something you do, can do as a rational agent to mitigate always so inflation is never uniform across all consumption goods if consumption goods are well, what you are looking at the cpi pce and if you can anticipate and be flexible you can mitigate the cost of inflation and that's the substitution of effect combined with rational expectations. You can transfer your assets. Say it's in a checking account. You bring it into an interest-bearing account, which, which will at least mitigate the cost of inflation. And you, you keep your liquidity preference fairly low. Now, who will it affect? So I have these people, I call them the packaged food people. The packaged food people are my neighbors. Uh, I haven't seen them leave their house in the last like seven years, except for, you know, the number, I can count it on my left hand, the number of times they've left their house. I speculate they're in the witness protection program. But a few times raccoons have gotten into their trash, then they scatter the trash all over the, you know, driveway. And I can see they're primarily consuming ready meals, packaged food. These people are probably going to be affected by inflation, but that's their choice because they have a set consumption pattern which is not flexible and they don't mitigate. Somebody like me, I mean, I'm, I'm not joking when I say I probably have one to one and a half tons of potatoes in my garage for storage. I grow my own, you know, carbohydrates, lettuce, vegetables. I, I go fishing, I mitigate it with different things. But even at the, at the grocery store, I, I use the substitution effect. So for somebody like me, inflation doesn't really touch, knock on wood. But somebody like, I'll call it the packaged food people, you know, they're set into a, they're a representative household. You know, economists like to use that term representative household as the average household. In fact, Michael Wolford 
interest in prices, a uh, primary monetary economist who talks about inflation, his whole model is based on one representative household. Kind of like in Sims, all they want to do is consume one, one item all day long. That's a bit of an abstraction if you ask me. So inflation only touches you if you're not rationally expecting things and you cannot be flexible and there's no substitution effect going on there. Let's look at the macro economy. While the statistical data that I've seen is inflation is only relevant to as a drag effect on the economy if it's plus minus 5%. So if it's over 5% or under, you know, 5% deflation. I you know, I've used statistical regressions and you can run some time series data of your own or vector auto regression analysis. You can use a software like Gretel. It's free open source. You can check these uh, this 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 my claims by running your own regressions. But the regressions that I've seen, and I've seen in uh, studies, cross sectional studies, and mega uh, mega uh, series data studies where they look at everything, you know, across you know twenty thirty different economies. Inflation is only relevant when it's plus five or minus five in terms of the inflation rate. But if you're in the band of like, you know, the two to 3% range plus or minus, it's, it doesn't have much of an effect on the economy. Again, I show that deflation is actually beneficial and that's for different reasons because productivity increases the supply of goods through technology and we should be in a money macro equilibrium that is slightly deflationary. Volatility also, if there's a little bit of volatility, rational expectations, rational agents can use substitution effect, anticipate and be forward looking through time you know, intertemporal time preferences. But if the volatility is too much, too high within a band, then uh, the rational agents get tricked or they can't fully anticipate or a lot of their energy goes into diversification or mitigating, uh, you know, through diversification, volatility. So if we have, let's say, inflation at 3.2% or a smidgen above the bands, it, it doesn't really do anything for me in terms of getting me too excited because I know statistically it's not, you know, my money macro equilibrium optimal. You know, I, I um, as a monetary economist, I prefer the gold standard, et cetera, mild deflation. But it's, it's not overly harmful to the economy. More relevant is what people are doing every day. And what's happening in the economy is, yes, real wages are increasing. So you can't make the counter argument that it's eroding our buying power because real wages are increasing. And the ultimate asset test for that is, would you want to be in a time machine and go back 100 years when they had a balanced budget and no inflation? I don't think so, because the people I know from 100 years ago, and I do know some people, uh, centurions and people from 100 years ago or lived that time in my lifetime, they said life was pretty hard. You know, maybe you'd get a piece of bread for, for lunch to go to school with. And I'm not joking about that. That was your school lunch. But they had a balanced budget. They had low inflation. Technology always, always uh, cancels out any of these monetary disruptions. The classical economists always believe that it always falls back to uh, classical value. So let's look at why the Federal Reserve even does try to target inflation. In the old days, it was the quantity theory of money. And that started with Copernicus in the modern age, and then Hume and, and Knut Vicksell showed that it's not really the quantity theory of money, but the elasticity of credit, because the velocity of money changes sometimes. And statistically, you can look at this. Velocity, the more money they print, the more velocity goes down. And so the quantity of money is not as relevant as the elasticity of credit and the credit markets. So they developed a new theory of the natural rate of interest versus, versus the bank rate of interest. And using that as a metrics, of course, I like the classical gold standard, but you can be off any kind of gold standard. You can be on fiat money and manage the money supply as long as you're doing it in rule-based, non-discretionary, so people can anticipate. And that's what they try to do. That's what they try to gravitate for. They claim their targets at 2 to 3%. ECB is like 2 to 3%. The Fed is like uh, 2%. Then this mitigates a lot of the uh, variability unknown and rational agents using uh, rational expectations and the substitution effect can anticipate, mitigate, and even thrive in under this environment. It doesn't have any major real effect on the economy. 
We're entering something called neutral money, where value for the economy comes back to classical. Are you working hard and are you using your brain? So in this synopsis, inflation is not hyperinflation. Hyperinflation, high variability inflation is something that is undesirable. But mild, low inflation, yes, it probably has some minor negative effects. And I'm not going to debate that in this, in this course. And yes, there's some monetization of the debt, etc. And there are some winners and losers. As long as you're a rational agent, rather than being a representative household, then things are going to be fine. So that's my spin as a monetary economist. My name is Mark Biernott. I'm a monetary economist researcher. And if you have any questions or comments below, I try to be pretty diligent about replying to them. But things are getting better, even though inflation is a little bit smidgen out of, out of range, out of bands. Nothing to get worried about. Everything's going to be okay. Have a great day. Thank you.